the making of a rocker truck squid buggy. The first thing you gotta do is grab hold of yourself a Umi, just like this one. This one is a very clever Umi. He has a lot of ideas about how to make war ammo cars and trucks, is what I heard. The only problem with this particular Umi is he get very distracted by things all the time. Sometimes this Umi isn't even thinking about the thing he's trying to be doing in the first place. Stupid Umi. <laughs> I heard the other Yumi speaking to the other Yumi about this place. Apparently, this place is something like a race castle or something. Anyway, doesn't matter. This place is already closed down. So, the boys had some fun before it all was taken away from them, obviously. Now, I didn't think this was fair because you need to get back to making my rocker truck. Mate. Right, Bogabok. We need to tell the boys about this week's video sponsor, Into the AM. When you is making the fastest wah machine, you is always needing to look good. With this graphic tease, not only do they look good, they is well comfy too. It's like snuggling one of them soft squidges. And for this Hummies viewers, they is offering 10% off if you is using the link below in the description box. Now listen carefully to the Hummy while he makes our truck. <laughs> Thanks boys for that introduction. It's very nice to know that the new shop in turns are actually useful. And now it is time for me to finally give you the video of how I made this rocket truck squeak buggy into an RC car. You may have seen it already under one of the social media app platform things and if you have this is the video of how I made it. The first thing I did was months ago stripped this kit of the parts that I needed to figure out how big of a size vehicle this car would fit on. I didn't really want to 3D print anything for this. The main thing I wanted to do was pretty much just throw the cover of this car on top of a working RC car. So I made a trip out to my friend's place called the race castle and we had a look at some of the vehicles that he sells on his website and we finally came across one that I thought would work and work really really well so the first thing I did was order that and went straight back to the studio and started putting together the rough body of this vehicle I needed to get it to pretty close to completion so that I could figure out how much I can remove from this car to be able to make it into a remote control car Now I'm going to spare you uh, the pain of putting together the kit. The kit itself is very small, it uses tiny screws, it makes your fingers hurt and in all honesty you're probably going to break a couple of parts before you have the kit together. However, it is the perfect size for this model. This kit itself is from Orlando, it is a 135th scale rock roller and it has all the bells and whistles so it's basically a miniature truck which is is super cool and like I said I wanted to make sure that I just put a case on top of a body and this would make it easier for me in the long run to be able to change it maybe even get to the battery maybe if I wanted to make maintenance not that I will probably do that but at least I had access to that and if you were making something like this you would probably be able to do different bodies if you wanted so in the end I ended up just going with making the chassis fit underneath the shell and this is essentially what all this cutting of plastic is all about. This is the 
point where I'd figured out that I'm going to use the chassis and not actually just parts by themselves so I put everything back together again and made sure that everything was straight and tidy before I started working on making sure that the top would fit over the chassis. All throughout this build, um, all I'm thinking about the whole time is where I'm going to put electronic parts because these kits are not designed to be remote control toys. So they don't think about where your battery is going to go when they make this model kit. And a lot of the time, it may look like things would work until you actually get it down and put into place and you realize that mm, that is not going to fit there and now you need to rethink. So I did a lot of cutting and removing of as much of the material as I possibly could without actually damaging anything on top. I don't want it to look like stuff is removed. In reality, I could have probably used the battery wrapped up in something looking like a squig food or whatever and put it on the back and just removed one of the guys, but I really didn't want that to happen. I wanted to make sure that this truck looked somewhat like it does on the box, except for it's an RC version of that truck. And so removal of a lot of the kit is very necessary. And as you can see, I've cut out massive pieces, huge chunks of plastic, just to get it down to something that roughly fits over the top of the chassis. I did the same thing for the front end as well and you can see that I'd put the part in place and realized that even after cutting carefully it still just wasn't going to fit so I just needed to remove even more plastic. When I remove this plastic I also do want to make sure it looks nice and smooth because you are going to kind of see that underneath the vehicle and I want to paint that. I want to make it look like it is a living vehicle and once I'd got it all together this is how the vehicle looks before I started painting it. Right. Don't tell Omi this, yeah, but if I just believe this thing is colored in one, three, color. And as this video is already long as it is, I figured that I wasn't going to put you through the pain of watching me paint this thing either. So I ended up painting most of this off of camera. I didn't record any of this unfortunately, but it's just a freaking orc truck paint whatever color you want most people keep saying I should paint it red anyway so the next part of the build is making sure that I had the right speed motor originally I had a very slow rock crawling motor which had very low rpm I used my friend's website orlandohunter.co.uk which will be open soon at the time I used it I had to go through him personally but it will be available soon so look out for that in the future the dude is super helpful and he helped me figure out that if I wanted more speed, I needed more RPM, which is kind of something I already knew, but I didn't know these things were available in the scale. So I made him send me the biggest, fastest one that he has for this vehicle. He also at the same time sent me a receiver and ESC, which is essentially the electronic speed controller which runs the motor for this vehicle. I desoldered everything, decased as much as possible, taking off all the plastic parts which they put the electronic bits in to protect them. Now in order to save space, as I've already said, there is no space in these vehicles for what I'm trying to do. So in order to save space, what I did was cut off all of the plugs. I removed all the plugs from the receiver, as well as the plug from the servo, and even the motor. I then made direct connections with the soldering iron and some soldering wire on top of the connections where the plugs used to be. I will spare you the technical aspects of the situation that I am currently dealing with. Essentially I need to fit a battery inside of this vehicle, but unfortunately that's the size battery I need to fit in, that is the size battery I have that's working, I made that and now it doesn't freaking work. I don't know what it is but I think I killed these packs and it's very sad 
And now I can't use that. I was so proud of that because this would have fitted so perfectly inside that little bonnet space. Because that's all the space I have left and this doesn't fit. Ah! <laughs> And after another couple of hours putting together another battery, I ended up by mistake shorting the battery and burning out yet another battery. Okay, so after that mess I went to the hobby shop and I found these. These are 100 milliamps, the 3 volts each, technically if I put two of them together, I will have a two cell battery, which is exactly the thing that I need to drive this vehicle. Please! just work because this is my last option. After all the electronics were done, the last and most important step was to set some magnets in place so the body could just clip onto the chassis and then I called the model done. I hope that this video gave you some inspiration for making your next crazy model. Maybe it was just something you needed to watch while sitting on the toilet. And if that was the case, I'm happy to have done that for you. We are at the part of the video where I need to say thank you to the patrons. Because, to be honest, without the patrons, there wouldn't be videos for you to watch in the first place. It is because of their help that the lot blondes marbles and I can keep the show rolling. Also if you are interested in the sponsor of this video and the awesome graphic tees that they make please have a look for them in the description there is a link so you can get 10% off I think everything just have a look at the link and see what you like. Thank you for watching the video of course if you didn't like anything that you saw in this video I don't really care and if you didn't like it then the best thing for yourself is to just f off. Now let me go make something else, drive or fly or explode.